Hello friends, Curator here. If you're watching this episode, this is the review portion for my Arkham Asylum playthrough. Now, the last episode ran quite long, so I decided to split it into two parts. So if you haven't watched the series yet, the card is up here. Watch the series. It's really good, I had a lot of fun playing it. But this right here is a review portion where I go over the little nooks and crannies, the character design, level design, my thoughts and feelings on the entire gameplay experience. So, without further ado, here's the review. And here we are, friends, back on the couch. And you all know what that means. It's time for the final review of Batman Arkham Asylum. As usual, we'll be going over the key points. Character design, enemy design, level design, gameplay mechanics, and overall, how I felt. Did I enjoy it? Did I like it? Did I hate it? You will find out near the end. So, to get one thing out of the way, I did not play the PS3 version. If it wasn't already obvious, actually. No, I did play the Return to Arkham version for a few key reasons. Graphical updates, and they added in a few small things that weren't included in the original. For instance, if you looked at the original PS3 version, it didn't rain. No, it had a green fog. It looked kind of eerie and dreary, but no rain. They couldn't fit it into the game. The PS4 version, they put the rain in, which actually adds to the atmosphere. It feels like, well, dreary, gloomy, things went wrong here. It added to it. But we'll get to more of that in level design. First of all, characters. How do they look? Well, they looked amazing, actually. I mean, without even the upgraded graphics to the PS4 from the PS3 version, it still has a lot of the same things, including the battle scars that Batman gets throughout the game. Between the cut in his suit right here, the cake getting more tatted as it goes along, the expression on his face going from ha huh to ha, huh, you know, more brooding than usual. And every character got a graphical update. Every character has an original design and actually, to me, embodies a character even better. Embodies their themes a lot more. For instance, Batman is still wearing his old grey and black outfit, long pointy ears and cowls and everything, but if you look closer, you see how the armor itself, or how his suit itself, is like a mesh of like Kevlar and bioweave, and it looks amazing. It's still heavily armored, and you definitely know this is a later Batman and not an earlier rendition, like in, say, Arkham Origins. It's not Year One Batman, this is more like Year Five or Ten. So moving on from him, we go on to, say, Harley Quinn. With her design, they completely overhauled it. They got rid of the mad, you know, Harlequin jester look and went right with the Nurse Harley, which is still pretty hot. Damn! <laughs> they still have the white makeup, the pigtails, and the mask on, but a full on nurse outfit looks great on her. Other enemies, not going for the minor ones, just for the major characters. Killer Croc! He has evolved a lot, and they made him terrifying. I just wish his level in boss fight was a bit better. More on that in level design and mechanics. Otherwise, his character is gigantic. He barely fit in a freight elevator in the beginning. I, a one-on-one -on -one fight with him would be, well, amazing. <laughs> but other than him, you go on to say... Bane, one of your first big fights of the game. And I liked it, but at the same time, he was completely overroided out. He didn't have a personality most times of the fight. I mean, Bane was big. Don't get me wrong, Bane is huge, but big body, little head. It looked kind of funky to me. And the oversized Venom pack, yeah, it was okay. Not my favorite version of Bane, but I liked it still. It could have used a few tweaks in there. You have Poison Ivy, who I wish was a little more in the game, actually. She's a section, a small bit of it. She goes more towards the levels than anything else, adding a few bits to it. 
But otherwise, her design, I mean, come on, she's wearing half a jumpsuit, you know, just a little bit of a, you know, how do you say that? It's a ticket. Not a tank top, but it's just a button blouse right here where her cleavage is. Other than that, she's wearing like an Adam and Eve bikini. Confusing, but still sexy, too. Sexually confusing? I, she's a plant, but she's a human. I don't know how I feel about that. She looked good, though. Scarecrow! Oh. They completely overhauled his look. Between not just wearing, you know, the Scarecrow mask, but no, he looks tattered, he looks ragged, he has the new Freddy Krueger-style needle glove, which he uses to inject you with the fear toxin. That's innovative. It's not just, like, dust he throws into your face or something like that. No, it's not even just, like, a spray he uses like he does in, you know, Batman Begins or the Dark Knight series. No! He injects you with it! And that's just terrifying. I mean, he's tiny and scrawny looking, but oh dear. And they make him look so much more horrifying in the later game. Not Arkham Asylum, but Arkham Knight, when they, you'll, you'll see in that video and that gameplay. But he only gets scarier. And seeing the giant version of it with his boss fight, a stealth level where he's, he has lasers for eyes, just light for eyes coming I mean, anyways that's once again level mechanics and design then we go on to the main character the main villain joker he looks great he reminds me of a mixture of i want to say the animated series mixed in with a more realistic design mixed in with some of the comic book elements as well like he still has the widow's peak and the nice little flip the pair the suit looks tattered like he's been beaten a bunch of different times. You know, it has patchwork here and there. He's scrawny and he's skinny as all hell. He looks like a comic book rendition of Joker. And speaking of comic books and, you know, TV shows, they actually got some of the cast to reprise their roles. You have... Mark Hamill as the Joker. You have Kevin Conroy as Batman. You have Arlene Sorkin as Joker. Sorry, Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn. My brain is working a million times a minute in this review. Arlene Sorkin reprising her role as Harley Quinn, which later on they replace her with Tara Strong. Amazing voice actress. They sound nearly identical, but there are a few things here and there that you can kind of, you know, pick out of the woodworks. But getting some of the cast to reprise the roles, if you grew up in the 90s with the Batman TV series, the animated series, you know the voices. You know who they are. And hearing that and playing a game with those characters in there makes it oh so much more enjoyable. It just, it's like a nostalgic trip with a great Batman game. Not just a mindless run around beat em up game, but it's atmospheric. Joker's lines in the game throughout the entire game where you hear him over the intercoms like, What is your worst fear? Failing the city, failing to stop me, not finding the commissioner, me, Alfong! It's pure Joker. It's terrifying yet hilarious. The lines in the game make it that much more enjoyable. Now we move on to level design. The island itself, you're in one island. You're not in the whole of Gotham, you're on Arkham Island. Focusing on three to four different buildings. Or at least main ones, your big ones, like the Botanical Gardens, the Infirmary, and the main lockup building, and so on. It's like a Metroid Venus style game. There's a lot of backtracking. A lot of backtracking. Because you do need to get newer gadgets to unlock different areas, or to, you know, scan a door here to blow up the force field in front of it, which you keep walking into for some ungodly reason because I was so stupid. Sorry. I deactivated that one door and I walked right into it repeatedly. I don't know why. But, there's so much more to the island. You actually get to see so much of the island itself. And the buildings ensuing. The botan- and every, every area looks different. Which you wouldn't think would happen considering that they're the same building, the same area. No, no, no! The main buildings, the visitor centers, the main 
cell block everything looked different and then you go on to the areas that for instance scarecrow's nightmares where the entire environment changes around you you've been infected by the fear toxin now you're walking down a hallway which turns into an even longer hallway which turns into an alleyway which turns into your worst nightmare which turns into you fighting a parents death which turns into you to be a little kid and wandering around as a little bruce wayne it's trippy seeing the bodies in the morgue moving G Scarecrow's nightmare sequences are things of nightmares. The scene where it goes back to the beginning of the game where I thought the game crashed on me. I legit restarted my game the first time I played this game. And I was so angry when I found out it was a hallucination by Scarecrow. Where the roles were switched, Joker was driving, Batman's losing his mind, and Jonathan Crane, the Scarecrow, is your doctor. Ugh! It's brilliant! But I lost a lot of progress the first time. Later on in the game, when you finally, when Ivy gets freed thanks to Harlequin, the island morphs more because of Ivy's plants. Meaning that you have steroid, or sorry, venom induced, sorry, titan induced plants overgrown the entire island. That is an eco-terrorist nightmare. Or not a nightmare for an eco-terrorist, but that is a gardener's worst nightmare when the plants attack you. And I hate, hate those buds that, you know, pop out pollen at you and attack you. I hated those things. Learning that I had to sneak up onto them so they wouldn't, you know, shoot out the pollen balls at you. Took a little while to figure out. They don't really give you an indication or anything like that. They're not like the other enemies that can turn around and see you or not. Oh. But those are only those few enemies. Then you have your regular thugs. You have your basic enemies, ones that just come out and punch you, trash talk you. You know, the easy ones. Then you go on to the lunatics that just scream and holler and add that little bit of terror. Where you're walking down the hallway and for some reason... There's an enemy above you that drops down on you. And then when you go up to the event where he was just hiding, you wonder how he got in there to begin with, because it's a, it's a dead end. There's nothing up there, actually. Just him. That's just kind of weird. But at the same time, they were freaky at first, annoying later on. Easy to avoid. Easy to counter and throw, then knock them out. Don't need to punch or kick them a lot. It's just a countering mechanic. Then you go on to the Titan-infused enemies, which... At first you would think, oh god, they recycled Bane, which they did. They recycled Bane, basically. He, you know, he runs at you, you throw a batarang, he gets blinded, he runs into a wall, or a few enemies. It's great when you're facing against multiple enemies, plus a titan. They just bulldoze everybody, and they'll just smack people out of the way too, it doesn't matter. They'll just smack an enemy out of the way for you. And when later on you get to ride one, you know, you jump on his back and you start, start smacking away all the other puny enemies. That's a cakewalk. Even Titan versus Titan. It's fun. But those are just the basic enemies. The boss fights are where things are kind of interesting and kind of weird. So, Harley's boss fight. It's not really a boss fight, it's an endurance match where the floor lights up and electrifies you. It's there, but it's not that bad. It's basically a challenge map. That's about it. Later on in the game, you unlock multiple challenge maps that kind of eh. And no, I did not forget about Victor Zaz. He's the minorest of villains. You face him twice, you sneak behind him, you dive kick him, you win. Or you throw a batarang, you win. That's not a boss fight, that's an annoyance. I know it's like a tutorial and showing you how to use certain weapons or what you can do, but even for a tutorial boss, eh. And Zaz was a, a serial killer. He would mark his body every time he killed somebody. That's why all the scars are all over him. He would just cut a piece of his skin every time he killed somebody. Luckily, they kind of redeemed him in Arkham City a little bit with a phone call. But that's Arkham City, not Arkham Asylum. Although he looked kind of funky with the gigantic bracelets on. Then we're going to kill a croc. This one I had the biggest problem with. Here I thought I was going to face Killer Croc. No, you're in a sewer. 
I hate sewers. They suck. I played with an evil recently. Sewers suck. But the fact that you have to sneak around the area, you have a noise meter on the side that tracks how much noise you're making so you can't run, you have to sneak. That's kind of cool. And then randomly Croc will pop out and run at you, and if he hits you, you're dead. There is no hits, there's a tackle, you drown, you're dead, you're lunch. And to disable him, you throw a single batarang. You don't even need to aim, a quick fire one will take him right out. What could have been an amazing fight, what could have been a one-on-one -on -one show where he jumps out of the water, you beat him up a few times, you dodge him, something. It is a strict stealth mission and then running away to blow up a hole in the floor that he falls down later on. There goes Croc. He's down there. Nothing more. That's it. Kind of a letdown. He looked great. He looked cool. They built him up. Uh. Scarecrow. Now he was an interesting fight as well. Once again, every enemy had a different mechanic on how to fight them and how to play against them. His was kind of interesting. It was a game of hide and seek, basically. Go around an area. Sneak. Stay out of the line of sight. He's the dragon god with, you know, flashes for eyes, essentially. He's a big game of hide and go seek. The trippy part besides the level itself being all warped out of reality, is that if you notice, there were times where the light would flash, your know, lightning would just flash in the background, and you turned into Scarecrow for a few seconds. I never noticed that until I say my fourth play through the game, and I went, huh, Scarecrow, me? What? Added in with the skeleton fights where you have a section of the ring blocked off because if he sees you, you're dead. And trying to fight in an enclosed area against multiple different enemies. Then the final showdown, where he's summoning skeletons out of nowhere to fight you, and you have to light up three bat signals to blind him and get rid of them. That was fun. That was good. That was different. It was something new. Although he died to kill a croc, that was. A weird twist I was not expecting, actually. Seeing, you know, him back and going, I'm going to threaten by dumping this entire thing of fear into, uh, you know, the city's water. And then Croc coming out, eating him, and the dust is right there on the floor. Why did I grab it? Why did I leave it there? I don't know. They don't tell you. But this is a bag of, you know, fear dust on the ground in the sewer down there that a rat could get into at some point. That's... Kind of, you know, a problem. Kind of neglectful of Batman on that part, but who cares? Then you go on to the last fight. The last fight versus Joker. This one, they do not tell you how to beat him. Or how to hurt him. He goes around, he swings his claws around. And once again, his design for this, fully original, fully strange. It's basically Joker mixed in with Bane, and it was terrifying. The long claws, exposed ribs, the muscular look, the mohawk. I don't understand the mohawk, but he had one, and it looked kind of cool. But he just swings his arms around. You can dodge them easily. Not a problem. Then he goes up there to watch the fight, sends in the goons, you beat them up, and how do you attack him exactly? Because he's invincible when you're when he's down there fighting you. You have to grapple hook him. You have to use the grapple claw to bring him down to you. They don't allude to this. They don't tell you this. They don't even hint at this. They don't even say, hey, by the way, grapple claw. <laughs> no, they don't tell you jack. So, by going through all your weapons and see what you can use, you can even batter him. You eventually use the grapple claw, bring him down to you, Assuming that no one punches you when you're in the middle of doing it because you thought you knocked him down, but apparently you didn't. Ah, oh, that was annoying. I let the guy out three times and he still came back. I don't understand. Anyways, you bring Joker down to you. You beat him up twice. The last time, the final showdown 
a Titan infused Joker versus you, the Man Bat, the Batman. You spray explosive gel on your face while he ain't looking, or he's not paying attention to you at all, and you punch him in the face. The repercussion behind that has to hurt. But Batman just kind of struggles, going, "Oh, my gauntlet's broken now. Great." Joker's knocked out cold. You think he'd be sitting there going, "Ow, ah, ah!" Nope. Batman's a badass. He just sits there going, "Yep, I did it." Now what? Ow. <laughs> it was hilarious, really. It was funny. It's shit. Ah. Uh -huh. Now we go on to gameplay mechanics. They're pretty simple. The style of combat they use is a free flow mechanic, to where you can go from one punch then jump to the next enemy and cover great distances between you and the next foe. That's acrobatics to the max. I mean, I'm over there punching a guy in the face. Suddenly, I do a lunging back kick and hit the guy way over there against the wall. And the combo system builds up more and more, allowing you to do special attacks to knock out an enemy instantly. I do hate the knife guys. The ones you can't, you'll punch as they keep blocking, or they just go for a three hit combo on you. Knocking them out first, priority. But the, the combat, it feels so good, and they only refine it later on in other games. Going on to Batman Arkham City, even Arkham Origins on the Arkham Knight, they just improve on the free flow mechanic, incorporating your weapons and your gadgets into it as you go along, punching a guy twice over here, throwing a battering over there, grappling the guy over there. Being able to do that in one fluid motion feels great. The dodging out of the way, even so, you dodge towards an enemy, you jump over them, which is great for getting around the guys with the stun batons. I still hate those. And the knife guys, of course. The stun mechanic, they will improve on later, definitely. But it's a good way of getting rid of, you know, those guys who'd like to destroy your combo. Building that up is key. Getting more of these special moves, definitely key. But you want to see how high you can get the combo with as many enemies as you can get? That's when the challenge maps come in. They have a whole section dedicated to the free throw combat. And a trophy I never got. Still sad about that. Then you move on to the stealth sections, where enemies can just obliterate you completely because they're all heavily armed. And later in the game, as the game progresses along, they've developed new tactics. So it's all about sneaking around, taking everybody off one by one, not engaging anybody, but knocking them out in one flow. One flow, one go. You know, whether it be knocking them out on the ground, whether it be, you know, putting out a chokehold in not killing him, or hanging a guy up from one of the gargoyles. That is fun. And funny how that later on you can just throw a battering and cut the rope and watch them fall under the death. I mean, to their life, to sleep. They're knocked out, they're not breaking anything, they're fine. Although you do hear a lot of crunching in this game. I'm hoping it's just, you know, an arm or a leg or... Yeah, you don't kill them, you just cripple them. That's better. Sure, why not? But going through, and later on, when they develop new tactics, where they start doing the buddy system, where they start going back to back, and you can't be seen, ever, that's when you employ every trick you have in the book to take them out. Dividing them. Using the sonic battering to hopefully get an enemy to just walk over there one at a time and take them out. Although if they destroy that battering, you can't use it for the rest of the match. Kind of sucks, but makes sense. You have one. That's all you got. You got you're through it. You're done. Then you get the guys where they have the collars on later on, where if you take one out, they know. It didn't already help that Joker would go over the intercom and say, Hey, your boy's out. You better go find him. Oh, he took out Carl. Boo. Well, I guess less people to pay over time. But it gets more and more. It makes you think on your toes as you're going through, trying to figure out the best way to get through the area without being seen and with no smoke bombs to just disappear into the night. Funny thing is that I can grapple in front of a guy to one of the gargoyles. They didn't see shit. Sometimes they do though. And the game and this certain scenario 
will get more and more difficult and more and more intriguing as the games go on. More tactics, same kind of idea, different tactics. This is a very long-winded review for the end of the game. I understand, there's a lot to unpack, there's a lot of good and a few bad here and there, but once again, first game of its kind to me. First game I've seen that's done it like this, I mean, Devil May Cry did something similar to it, but that was more of a hack and slash combo, you know, gainer. This one incorporated stealth, combat, investigation, and don't worry, I did not forget, collectibles. The Riddler stuff, which I knew where a lot of things were, but couldn't get yet. It's interesting finding the collectibles, like the tapes that I know I didn't play them all because I wanted to hear the rest of the game going on, you know, and hearing the interview in the background is kind of distracting, but there's a lot. If you ever get a chance and you pick the game, please listen to them. They are intriguing, they're more insightful, you learn more about the characters as you go along, you learn what happened to a few of them here and there. There are so many references to other Batman's rogues gallery. I mean, you have some of the ones you know, like Catwoman. There's her claws and her goggles. There's Penguin's umbrella. Some of you might not know. Like, who is that guy? Or who is Tweedledee and Tweedledum? Or, you know, some you don't even remember. The Rachel Ghoul one was very creepy. And the fact that you can go back to him and there's no body there. That's detail. That's good detail. But 240 riddles, teeth, trophies. That's a lot. Just to catch Riddler. There will be a special episode coming out soonish, I want to say. It takes a while. It takes a while to film to get all of the trophies. I'm over halfway there. I think I had like 80 left to get. That is a full hour or more of itself. Luckily, I have the guidebook. That will help. I think a little. But at the payoff, I wish was a little bit better. And you will see that in a future episode. But as for the review itself, this is the end. We are done. Arkham Asylum is done. And with that, what do I think? I love it. I, I do enjoy Batman. He's had a bunch of crap games. This one was amazing. It was a breath of fresh air. It was something new. It was something intriguing. I kept wanting to play. I kept wanting to go back, fight new enemies, find some of the actual trophies. They had wall trophies. Wall. Trophies, not wall meat. Why did he learn from Dracula? I don't know. If you see my Castlevania review, you'll understand why. This is a callback. Otherwise, the game is great. I love it. I have two to three copies of the game already, along with Arkham City, Arkham Knight. I have one. Arkham Origins, one. But this game was a pioneer of its time. It was a great way to bring back comic book games into a new light that we haven't seen in quite a while since, I want to say, Spider-Man 2. Where they brought back the freedom mechanic, being able to go from wherever you want on the island, freely, explore, see the atmosphere, see the light, see the detail they put into this game was immense. So I say, if you have it, good. If you don't have it, get it. Add it to your collection. You'll love it. Play it. Play it again. New Game Plus. Play it again. You'll enjoy it. You'll have a blast with it. But, my friends, that's all I have for you today. If you're enjoying the content, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me how I'm doing. Tell me what games you want to see next as a playthrough slash review. But that's all I have for you today, my friends. And as always, I have been your humble curator, and until next time, signing off.